As you can see within my document, I have headings for each of my sections. Like for this section, the heading is Step 1 Spiritually. For the next one is Step 2 Physically, and so on. And typically, you want your headings to have some sort of formatting applied to it that offsets it from the body of the supporting text below it, so the reader can more readily identify those sections. So you can do it manually by selecting the heading, and in the mini formatting toolbar, you know, apply some formats like bold, italics, something spiffy, click off, and there you go. So it pops out, and the reader can go, oh, this is about the spiritually healthy section. Now you can do it that way, like I said, manually, or, let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times, you can use styles. What is a style? It's a collection of formats that you can apply in a single click, like heading styles. Doesn't that sound cool? Because with this I had to do a couple of clicks. What if everything happened in a single click? Well, let me introduce you to that by coming up here on the Home tab to the Styles group, and hey, you've got style. And if you want to click on the drop-down arrow, the More button, you can see more styles. Now in this training video we're going to be learning about how to apply and the purpose and the benefits behind styles. We're not going to create a style, but you can do that. We'll learn about that in a later training video. So if you're looking at this going, okay, I see what you're looking at, using the Heading 1 style for our headings there, but I don't like the size of it, I don't like the color. You can go ahead and right click and modify it, but I digress. Let me just go ahead and click on it to apply it, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So first off, I wanted to show you what it looks like after you apply it, click off, and also the benefits from using the styles as opposed to, well, creating your own heading styles, you know, by doing it step by step, making it bold, italics, doing your own thing. So the benefits behind using styles, one, is that, well, you got a single click, all you have to do is go ahead and, let me scroll down, click inside the paragraph here, because as you recall, up here on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, click on the Show Codes, that line right there, that heading, is in its own paragraph. So I don't have to select it to apply a style. I just have to click anywhere within the paragraph and click on Heading 1 and boom, it applies it. So let me go ahead and drop the codes and go down to Step 3 and apply that one. Step 4, whew, quite a few steps. And step 5, and then when I'm done, let me click and drag the scroll bar all the way to the top. And that's one of the benefits, single click. And you can imagine if you can modify that so it's the style that you like, then once it's modified, you can apply that style in a single click. Now the other benefits include that once you apply a style to a heading, that when you hover back over that heading that has its style applied to it, look over there. Hey, you get a little drop-down triangle. Click on it, and it collapses everything below that style for heading 1 to the next one. And then you can collapse that, and collapse step 3, and collapse that heading, and collapse that, and just focus simply on the headings within your document. So that way you don't have to scroll, scroll, scroll to get a review of all the headings. Or better yet, you don't even have to do that if you want to review all the headings by collapsing them. But you could if you'd like, to prevent long scrolling times. But, let me go ahead and expand all that again. Remember, our navigation pane, Control F, the shortcut keys. Over here, you have your heading search, so select headings, and it lists all the headings within your document. The headings that Word recognizes as headings because that's part of the coding. Because if you went ahead and you just applied your own, like I'll make that bold, make it blue, and that's supposed to be a heading, there's nothing there to tell Word that that's going to be different from making parts of your supporting text bold and saying, okay, this is bold, that's bold, now oh, they're all headings. But this is specifically coded and targeted to apply to our headings here, so it can automatically be pulled over here in the navigation pane. We can collapse it, and one more benefit is that these headings, once identified by applying styles to them, can be used in the table of contents. If you remember reading a book at the very beginning of the book, it'd have a listing of all the different chapters, and then it would have a dot, 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 like, for example, here. If we created a table of contents here, which we'll learn about in a later training video, it would pull all the headings there onto the page, well, the first page within the document, or second, doesn't matter, just somewhere at the beginning of the document, like, let's say, the first page, for the sake of argument, it would have all these headings there with the dot, 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 and the corresponding page number that they can be found on. So that way, when you print it off, and somebody turns to the first or second page with the table of contents, they can go, you know what, I just want to go right to step five about family. What page is that on? They don't have to flip through a bunch of pages to get it. Better yet, if you keep this electronically, the table of contents acts like a link. So, 
if in the table of contents I want to jump right to step 5 family, all I have to do is go ahead and click on that in the table of contents and it takes me right to this page here to step 5. And speaking of which, you can actually consider this a table of contents because there's the contents button headings and then to jump right to it, like step 2 physically, click on it, boom. Oh, that is sweet. Well, I'm sold. I'll start using heading styles. And if you're like, well, wait a second, I don't like these styles. Again, we can go ahead and let me click here. Step one, come up here on the Home tab in the Styles group. And like I said, when in doubt, right click because chances are when you right click on something that you're working on, you'll have the answer in the shortcut menu. And so thus we have Modify. Click on it and we've got the properties here. So the name of it's heading one, which you can change and call it H1 if you'd like. And then the styles based upon, style for following paragraphs, so additional styles to think about. But the formatting that's being applied to the style is the font Cambria, size 16. It looks like a dark blue. Click on the corresponding drop down arrow. And you can see the box it's highlighted, hover over it, and in the pop-up it says blue accent one, darker 25%. Oh, okay. So there you go. Or you can come down below and read it out here. For the most part, it's got everything. So it's got the type of font, Cambria, size 16, size 16, the color, accent 1. Um, okay, it was darker, and also it was, well, it doesn't give us all of it, does it? Blue, darker 25% is missing. In any case, it gave us the accent. And then it's got 12-point space before it, so the paragraph doesn't close right on top of the heading. And then keep with next means that it's going to keep that paragraph with the next. So if it gets to the bottom of a page, instead of taking the supporting text and putting it at the top of the next page, so you've got that odd thing going where you're like spiritually, then you go to the top of the next page and reading it, and after a while going, what was this about again? So you have to go back to the bottom of the previous page and go, oh, that's right, it's about being spiritual. So what it does is it keeps that with the paragraph, so it'll force this onto the next page, and you'll have some extra space at the bottom of the previous page, so it can keep everything together, keep with the next paragraph. Now keep lines together, and don't worry, we'll talk about the keep next and keep lines together in a later training video. But keep lines together means that if you have a lot of text, like two or three lines, that has the heading one style applied to it, that again, if it's going to create what we'll talk about orphans and widows, where it keeps one line here, and then because it's at the bottom of a page, it can't keep the other two uh, lines that has the heading style with it. Instead of breaking that and having that at the top of the next page, it forces everything to the top of the next page so we don't have a broken heading. So keep with the next paragraph, or if you have several lines that has the heading style, keep all lines together, and don't break them across the pages, the level one, in any case. Now to modify it, well, it's pretty simple. You can select a color here, like make it red, italics, underline, and then when you're done, click okie dokie, and there you go. And then scroll down, and it automatically updated all the others that have the same heading style applied to it. Let me go ahead and hit undo. Go back, come up here, right-click to modify to see additional options. Like when you go ahead and you work with this, do you want it only in this document or all new documents based upon this template? So the heading one by default will be in every single document you create, but when you make changes to it, it's only going to be in this document until you select the option that you want new documents to be based upon the changes you made in this template. And then if you want to get more particular with additional formats to see what's available, click on the Format button, go to Font, and well, there's the Advanced tab. How about if we go to the Font tab and do Strike Through, Additional Formatting Options, click Cancel, click Format. You can even assign it a shortcut key if you'd like, instead of coming all the way up here and clicking on that to apply it to a paragraph, especially if you're not on the Home tab and you don't want to go all the way over and click on the Home tab. In any case, Shortcut Key, select it. With the cursor flashing and press New Shortcut Key, you can try one of the Control, Shift, or Alt keys to a letter like Control P, but we already know that that's currently assigned to the Print, Preview, and Print. At least as we talked about in an earlier training video, let's go ahead and hit the Backspace key and try it again. How about Control, Shift, Alt, Z? Ooh, that's pretty crazy, all four fingers. That's going to take some coordination, and you can see that it's unassigned. So let's go ahead and click Assign It. It's assigned. Click Close. Click Okie Dokie. And let's go ahead and click inside of this paragraph. Well, let's do this one right here. Read more. Control, 
Alt, Shift, Z. Hey, that was fast. Let me go ahead and undo that. And then, of course, to get rid of it, if you don't want the shortcut keys, right click to modify, format, shortcut key, select it, remove it, and it's gone. Click OK. Dokey. Now, if you apply the style already and you want to do some changes and you go ahead and select the text that has the style applied to it, the paragraph, and you're like, hmm, let me see, red, I do like that, italics, underline, well, no, bold, no, how about just that? And you like that and you're like, oh, rats, I wish I would have modified it so I can make the changes there first before I went and messed with it here because now it's only applied to that one and not all the others. That's okay. All you have to do is go ahead with the, well, paragraph still selected. It's still the Heading 1 style with some additions. If you want to go ahead and update the Heading 1 to reflect what you have selected here, then right-click and Update Heading to Match Selection. Left-click, and you can see now it's updated, so it's no longer in blue. In the gallery, it's red, and everybody else is red. Ooh, they're so angry red. And then you got some additional options when you right-click on it. You can select all five instances of it, so when you scroll down, all five are selected. You can right-click on it, rename it if you'd like, but I'll keep it as is. And remove from the style gallery, which you know, I don't want to mess with that, I'll leave it there. Click off. And then finally, if you want to be able to have more heading styles available, because like, you have your heading one here, and let's say you have some sections within the section here, that have their subheadings to the heading one, like spiritually, you also want to focus on meditating. Maybe you have a subheading that's meditating, all about meditating as part of that. So in any case, to get your subheadings, like heading two, three, four, then go ahead and click on the expandable dialog box for styles. Open up the styles window. Come down below, click on manage styles, and go to the recommend tab. It'll probably dump you on the edit tab, but we'll go to the recommend because that's what I recommend. And you can see, well, let me click off, that heading one is black and bold and as opposed to the others that are hiding in a shade of gray. So it's going to be hidden until used. Well, to undo that, select it and say show. And then it jumps around. That's okay. Let's scroll back down here and select three and say show. And I'm good. Let's click okie dokie. And then keep in mind here as well, it says what you do will only be done in this document unless you say, I would like the headings 2 and 3 available in all new documents as well. That's all right. We'll just keep it here and click okie dokie and then close out of here and click on the more button. And there you go. There's heading 2. So with everything selected, if I hover over heading 2, you get a preview of it in your document. Well, you have a preview here, but at least I can see it within context within the document. And then there's heading 3, and it's tinier. So like I said, if you don't like what you see here, right-click and modify it, update it, so it fits your narrative. That way you can take advantage of all the benefits with the advanced features of table contents, collapsing it, and also viewing it in the navigation pane and jumping right to those headings in a single click. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.